I recently bought this game for kids, which is called Looping Louis. And even though it is designed for kids, it is really fun to play with some friends. It's also super simple. You just need two AA batteries, which power the motor inside the construction. This pilot then goes in circles, and you have to prevent him from hitting your coins. Otherwise, they fall down. If you lose all of them, it is game over. But the speed of the plane is kind of slow for an adult. So let's change that by hacking this kid's toy and building a controller which not only lets you control the speed by a potentiometer, but also has three random modes which randomly speeds up or slows down the plane. Let's get started. Firstly, let's see what the motor can handle. I hooked up my power wires to the positive and negative terminal of the battery holder. Then I fired up my power supply. 2.5 volts was the normal voltage and it draws around 100 milliamps. I increased the voltage up to 9 volts and not higher because the game was beginning to shake and got unstable. This way it draws around 350 milliamps and the speed is really fast, which will make the game more difficult later. So let's use 9 volts. Here is the schematic that I made for this project. Looks complicated, but let me explain. The first I see here is an Atmega 328P. You also find them on all Arduino Uno boards. This guy controls everything. The second I see is a L293D, which is an H-bridge motor driver. It can handle 600 milliamps, which is more than we need, so it's fine. And it can control the motor in both directions forwards and backwards. The backwards mode will later give the game a short break, because this way the pilot does not knock over the chips. Pin 1 receives a PWM signal from the microcontroller to control the speed, and the pins 2 and 7 determine in which direction the motor spins. Moving on to the LCD, it will later tell us what mode we are using and how fast the motor spins. The only tricky thing about controlling this LCD is this potentiometer here. It determines the contrast of the screen, so don't forget to adjust it at the end, otherwise you will think the screen is broken, because you will see absolutely nothing. Then we also have an input jack, a main switch, two push buttons to select the mode and pause the game, and a LM7805 voltage regulator to produce 5 volts for our controlling electronics. Just follow the schematic if you want to build this too. Here are all the components you will need for this build, and you can also find all of those nicely listed on my Instructables site. Link is in the description. At first I got myself a PCB with copper dots and used a saw to make it fit inside my case. Then I used screws to secure it inside. But before soldering anything to it, I have to make the holes for the parts. And this time I really did that nicely. So I got myself this white tape to cover the case. This way I can easily mark the positions of all the parts. This is how the front will look like later. So I started to drill holes for the push buttons and the potentiometer. The big square for the LCD was a bit difficult, but with a Dremel and a file and a lot of time, and I mean a freaking lot of time, it is possible. Next is the square for the main switch, and after that the DC jack hole. At the end I drilled a really small hole at the right side of the case. This is where the wires for the motor will come out later. And the case is done! Let's solder wires to the external components, like the two push buttons, the potentiometer, the DC jack and the main switch. As always, don't forget shrinking tube and I also twisted the wires afterwards to keep them together. Lastly, I soldered male headers to the ends of all wires to connect them later to the main PCB. The LCD gets a bit of special attention. I connected the pins which connects to 5 volts later together on the LCD. This includes pin 2 and 15. And the same goes for the ground pins 1, 5 and 16. Then I got myself a 8 pin ribbon cable and connected it to the necessary pins. Lastly, I soldered my contrast potentiometer directly on the LCD. Finally, it is time to build the PCB. Well, almost. Before that, I made some female headers which will later connect to our external parts. But now we can solder. 
This time I did not make a board layout diagram for you guys. But it is not that complicated to build this board yourself. And you can use my finished board as a reference. Picks on instructables. All you need to do is inspecting the schematic and carefully connecting all the pins of the components to each other how the schematic tells you to. Easy, right? I mostly use bridge wire and solder traces to connect the pins. But at the end I also used wire because it was not possible anymore to do it otherwise. The last step would be to connect the motor wires to pin 3 and 6 of the L293D. And I also marked in which orientation the female and male header have to connect later. Now it is time for a test. I gave the board power and checked whether there really are 5 volts where they are supposed to. Then I inserted all ICs and used my FTDI breakout to program the add mega with the code a friend of mine made. And apparently it all works fine. Awesome! Now I secured all the external parts on my case. And I only used hot glue for the LCD. That is a new record for me. Then it was time for some power. I got myself this 9 volt power supply which can give me 1 amp. Which is enough because the whole project needs only 450 milliamps maximum. Last step would be to drill a hole into the battery holder case and pushing the wires inside there. I connected one wire to one side and the other to the other terminal. And we are done! It is super fun to play and you can even use it as a drinking game to enjoy your favorite juice. As always, thanks for watching. Be sure to follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Google Plus to know what I'm up to and also to send me suggestions and questions. Stay creative and I will see you next time.